Welcome back to another edition of the Edge Podcast. Publisher Brendan Slaughter here for BeaversEdge.com. Joined by Beaver's Edge writer Ryan Harlan back on the podcast. Good to be back with you guys. We got a whole bunch to get into on today's edition of the podcast. Uh, we got everything from football practice reports to Damian Martinez to the women's basketball departures to some positive news with some baseball uh, going on as well as the uh, Oregon State baseball team is set to take on Stanford this weekend. So lots to get into here on the Edge, Pals, Edge podcast. Want to go ahead and welcome in Ryan Harlan. Ryan, you've been busy this week uh, keeping things uh, wired in at Beaver's Edge. Your practice reports have been stellar, my friend friend in addition to all that there's been so much other news going on this week too let's just start with how you are man and what kind of a week has this been like uh, down in Corvallis doing good I mean it's busy it's one of those things where like it's uh it's you know it's 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 that kind of week it's that week like similar when Smith left it's similar with like how realignment was during the summer Mm -hmm. it was uh yeah, it was just very much a uh, very much a hectic week, but more of like after dealing with that, I feel comfortable <laughs> with with this. It's just kind of like you just get to a point where you're like, okay, like this is the new normal in college athletics. Like there's nothing totally. we can do. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's, yeah, it's like, I I don't even really know how to put this week into words. I mean, obviously we're going to start with Damian Martinez because that was the bombshell that dropped uh, earlier this week. And, you know, uh, I I think it's safe to say, Ryan, that it caught pretty much everybody by surprise. I mean, we learned today from your conversations with Trent Bray that Trent knew Monday night uh, per what he said that he had a conversation with Damian and, and that was that, but we all found out kind of during slash the end of practice on Tuesday. And then for lack of better terms, all hell broke loose. And it's kind of been that way for about 48 hours. Um, Just kind of your initial thoughts on the situation. You know, we can kind of set the stage. I think most everyone's kind of read what the, you know, he said, he said part of this was with Damian Martinez, you know, saying, you know, it was a decision for him. And then, you know, perhaps collect the collective did not deliver on promises. And then you've seen Oregon state, the collective come out and say, you know, we did deliver on promises. So just a, a really ugly situation, Ryan, and one that I didn't think Oregon state fans would find themselves in uh, considering how much, you know, Damian Martinez was, you know, posting the, the Jordan Belfort Wolf of wall street gift back in November. I'm not leaving. And, you know, kind of double tripled and, when toppled down on that, like throughout the months. And I, I just, I, I find it so interesting that like, you know, it, it, it happened the way that it did because I, I don't think anybody saw it coming. And it was one of those things where for the most part, I think it caught everyone by surprise. What was kind of your thoughts when it came down and ultimately were you surprised? I was a little surprised on Tuesday. Um, just kind of going in, I didn't think much of, um, I did not think much of, uh, Dame not showing showing up for practice because sure. I I I was kind of under the impression of like, hey maybe it's um hey maybe it's he's sick or off day or whatever like because because of the because of what he had said previously so I didn't think much of it and then after we after finishing talking up to Thomas Ford Jr. the new running backs coach. Mm-hmm. Um, that's when my phone started to blow up <laughs> blow up where like th- there were r- rumors of him leaving and then that became official later that day on Tuesday and it, it just kind of took me off guard and kind of mm-hmm. was of a like oh that make that that makes sense as to why and I think with the way how the situation's being dealt with it's kind of a um it's kind of a uh just just terrible optics yeah for for how damien's kind of handling this it's like i understand that you know you might have been doing this in the best interest but at the same time like there, there's a lot there's a line of professionalism that i think got crossed a little bit that 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 uh that that's kind of not making him look the best in the situation specifically with like the messaging behind everything and saying, Oh, the collective didn't do their part or anything that's been reported. That's been said, that's false. I'm trying to correct the story to fit my own narrative of what happened. Right. Like the, the even, even the latest sort of report on this entire situation seems to even backtrack some of what he, what he had said previously. So it's kind of, kind of a, a, a thing where I'm like, I have a, hard time believing that the collective didn't 
uh, put their pull their end of the bargain. Like, sure, it seemed like Damnation was willing to help out Martinez in any way, but more of kind of like it, it. It it just it just seems like it was somebody probably in his ear, probably his agent telling him kind of what to say in order to make the exit a little more i guess palatable yeah (laughs) like it just kind of that's just kind of how it kind of came across and and it just continues to be this like this 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 um this kind of war words of of like this is what was said but this is not what was said and my understanding at least was that the collective was the one were pulling their end of the bargain and it just probably was dame's agent in his ear saying hey like if you go to another school you're gonna get more exposure you're gonna get you know you're gonna be able to get more eyes on you than you would playing a primarily mountain west dominant schedule yeah you know i think i think uh, you know great points across the board and you know fantastic insight and i think oh pretty much everything you said kind of tracks with what i think too i mean Ultimately, we may never know exactly what the what the truth is. You know what they always say, you know, Ryan, there's there's, uh, you know, his version, his version and then the truth. Right. So it's it's one of those things where I think kind of what you're saying, like if, if you know, we talked about it a little bit on, on Rip City Mornings uh, this week and just, you know, my, my kind of take on it is I think ultimately with that, like it's very convenient that you know, shortly after all this went down and most likely Damian Martinez received all of Beaver Nation in his mentions, for lack of better terms. And then, like you said, oh, well, if I justify it this way, I can I can sleep at night, for lack of better terms. And, and I don't mean that, you know, uh, you know, viciously in any way. I mean, hey, people got to do what's, what they think is best for him. And that's what he says he's doing here. Um, the problem that I have is that like, like it, it doesn't seem like there's a, a real firm reason. Like this was kind of like a cop out, for lack of better terms. Like, oh, yeah. you know, the agent got in my ear, and then it's like, oh, well, they're not meeting the terms based on what my agent says they should be meeting. Even though, I just think getting another voice chattering in the ear, um, kind of was negative. And you know, that's the thing we've heard about in college athletics now. Now that these guys can have agents, um, you know, that's. You know, agents are going to do, Ryan, what gets them their cut, right? At the end of the day, like, is that agent getting a 3% cut from what Damian Martinez is making in Oregon State? Probably not. Is he going to get a cut of what he'll make at his new school? I would be willing to bet so. So, you know, that's something where everything is driven by money. And, you know, it's, um, it, it, you know, I, I think like this this kind of broke my, my brain as far as like, now I expect nothing in college like nothing surprises me in college football anymore i've now seen you know a guy who's doubled down triple down has been like hey you know i'm staying loyal all these things and that was the thing where i always want to take a moment and just you know shout out beaver fans a little bit because you know it's, it's one thing for you and i ryan who are on the journalistic side of this but like for the fans and i saw so many uh, you know just fans outpouring in my mentions on beaversedge.com that were like i just bought my kid a martinez jersey who do I see about that? This, you know, I was telling my kids, this is the guy to model yourself after. This is the character, right? And I, I can't tell you how many times I saw variations of that. And, you know, I don't want to turn this into a, you know, a just hate on Martinez because I think that's happened enough and it is what it is. And like Trent Bray said, onwards and forwards, it, it's it's not great for Oregon State and you would like to have him. But at the end of the day, you know, as I said this morning, Ryan, football practice continued. Like life goes yeah. on, right? So there's eight, you know, hundred and some other players who are like, hey, you know, we're we're happy to be here. We're happy to work and all those things. But, you know, that's kind of was my thing. It's just like, like you said, the optics, um, you know, I feel disappointed for a lot of Beaver fans who had kind of said, you know, this was the guy we hang our hat on. This was kind of the rallying cry uh, amidst Jonathan Smith leaving amidst, you know, all the realignment stuff like Damian Martinez was the anchor that you kind of held yourself onto. And I think a lot of Beaver fans were like, we're drowning in the ocean without a life preserver now. And, you know, I, I think, I, I think it just kind of rocked them to their core, so to speak. And, and it was just the way it was handled. I, I just, it's it's hard to fully respect the way it was handled. If, if that makes sense. 
Oh, no, I agree. And that's how I my, my biggest sticking point from it was, was the situation of how it was handled and mm-hmm. kind of kind of like what Dame was saying in the lead up to to his departure, because that 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 yep. is something where I think a lot of Oregon State fans are hurt by is the preaching of loyalty all the way up until the third week of spring football practice where something at that point in time changed whatever that might be yep. spring break that that that, that <laughs> was yeah that that that's that was the moment there like i sure sure like the timing is terrible for for this to happen but also if he, i think if damian didn't play it out like this and just said just issued a kind of vague statement about yeah. it just kind of saying this is this is why i'm entering the portal sure people have been upset but they wouldn't be upset to do, to the degree to which they are but even then too like if you were going to leave why didn't you do it with everybody else at the end of the season right that that's the other thing where i don't where i'm kind of like i don't really like the timing of mm-hmm. that and sure maybe exposure is is the reason but nfl scouts are going to find you no matter where you play and if that's D- damian martinez's goal of the next season he could have he could have stuck around for one more year and he probably would have not not been a first round pick but at least second third round pick uh for that because the way the nfl goes sure. with how values running, running backs back. now yeah, yeah totally totally so so he probably would have been a high draft pick anyway it, it just it's a very head scratching move at the end of the day and and really like as Bray said it's onwards at this point and even coach Ford kind of said it too of like hey the guys that are here I want to coach them and I want to put all my energy into them and that's who this coaching staff is going to care about at the end of the day is the guys that stick around and want to be beavers and that was something I coach forward emphasized in his uh in his uh presser uh on tuesday he didn't talk about damien not being there he just kind of briefly mentioned him but like that was something where he kind of put pointed that there and i and i agree like life goes on like at this point it sure it's a it's a big loss but the depth i don't think takes that much of a hit with both anthony hankerson jam griffin and the rest of that room um combined together i mean if dame did stay it would have been four 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 running backs that could have been running back one on any yeah. team they're sure it's a luxury but it's not a necessity at the end of the day and you have two you have two running backs coming in next next year that are even more more hungry at the chomp at the bit to see significant time with him totally. going on Totally. So I mean, that's that. That's 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 uh, trying to get away from that negative. Yeah. Mindset going a little more positive of uh, of what Beaver fans have to look forward to, at least for football, headed into fall camp. Totally. And, and, you know, it's one of those things where, you know, it, it was maybe the most, you know, um, and I think it applies to many, many aspects of life, Ryan. But it's like you can only control what you can control. And in this particular case, Trip. Trent Brake couldn't control it. No one on Oregon State could control it. You know, like I, you guys mentioned it, like Trent was asked, did you try to get him to stay? And he's like, of course. But, you know, there was, you know, obviously more to than what we entirely know. And, you know, we'll see where his landing spot is ultimately. Um, I'm curious, and, and this is something that was tossed out a little bit on Beaver's Edge 2 on the message boards and something that I, I, I think there maybe are some legs to it, but... I, I think this purely was driven by agent and money. And I think that's what ultimately um, pushed it over the top. Some, some were out there saying, Hey, maybe, you know, Damien had some concerns about Ryan Gunderson's offense and how he's going to be used compared to the Brian Lindgren offense. And no doubt we've seen it with our own eyes in spring. It is a different offense. They are going to be running the ball a little bit differently. They're still going to be a ground first team, but it's going to be different formations, different schemes, all those things. And, you know, uh, with that, there is a case to be made, Ryan, that Jam Griffin and Anthony Hankerson, both about 5'9", 190, their physique 
is a little bit better suited towards Gunderson's kind of more o RPO style offense. And I think that's kind of what you guys are seeing right now in practices. And what we've kind of seen is that, you know, those kind of really quick backs, they like to get the ball in space and so on. Um, and that's when you arrive at Isaiah Newell, who's kind of the Martinez-esque type as far as the physique. Mar I believe Newell is 6'2", 220, somewhere right around there, um, compared to those other guys who are, you know, 30 pounds lighter than Martinez was. So I think, and I wrote about this yesterday, that those two guys that you mentioned are absolutely going to be at the top. But Isaiah Newell could be one of the bigger recipients of da of Damien's departure simply because he boasts that same frame, more of the bigger style running back in between the tackles rather than the edge-to-edge, -edge, you know, speed on the sides. Um, so, I mean, obviously, to your point, there's not a running back room in America that wouldn't want Martinez. Now, the, the, you know, that's to say, you know, the Beavers did not, you know, get better or aren't the same without Martinez. You know, it is a loss. But as Ryan mentioned, you know, you feel good about, you know, having a player like Jam there, having a guy like Anthony Hankerson, who has been very impressive uh, in spring so far. Obviously, we mentioned um you know, what uh, What the freshman, uh, Salahadeen Hala and, you know, Cornell Hatcher are going to bring in as well. And then you combine those guys with Newell, who we mentioned as well. It's still a pretty depth, you know, depth heavy room. So that's a good thing for Oregon State. I mean, they only had three scholarship running backs all of last year. So, um, you know, from that perspective, they can definitely take it. I, I, I'm just, you know, at the end of the day, like it's not even so much the the talent or the departure fit, because I think Oregon state can still win games without Damian Martinez. I think it's more just like your university took like a really big PR gut punch this week. That's kind of how I look at this. And it's like, how many more PR gut punches, Ryan, can this university take and just like, and I should say this athletically, academically, you know, Oregon state's Oregon state, but athletically speaking, you're talking Damian Martinez, Mr. Loyalist taken off. You're talking about, you know, Talia Von Olhoff and maybe the heart and soul of the women's team. And we'll get to the women uh, a little bit later in the podcast uh, if we don't talk about Martinez for the whole time. But, you know, just that and then, you know, all this, it just, it you know, the you know, uh, other five players that have joined in the women's departures now, Ryan, the men's basketball departures. It just, it, it kind of seems like Oregon State fans have kind of had to take their medicine uh, these last, you know, couple weeks, you know, and recently even months going back to like realignment and all that. And, you know, I just, I, I've definitely seen some, some frustrations from fans and, you know, it's, it's a tough time. It, it is a tough time to support Oregon State athletics. I'll say that. Yeah. Uh, the frustrations are warranted too, but at, yeah. at some point it's just kind of like there, there there's nothing you can really do because the right. decisions that are being made are at the top by these TV networks that, uh -huh. that basically have said that, Hey, Oregon state, Hey, Washington state, we don't value the same way that we do for the other 10 schools. And we're, and that's really it. It's in coming from the East coast. Like there's not a lot of West coast games that are shown in prime time slots. And even for when I was watching an Oregon state game before. So when I, I arrived in 2019 as a freshman here, COVID. And then before I came back to Corvallis in fall of 21, uh, I was watching the Hawaii. I was watching the Hawaii game. Yeah. Oregon state versus Hawaii. Also too. So Civil War that, that year, 2020, of watching that game. I was up till 2, 3 a.m. <laughs> on the East Coast watching that yeah. because of just when they showed when they showed that game out there and really like the big driving factors, at least for like conferences or like those big ones on the Big Ten, the SEC, the ACC. Virginia is heavily dominant with SEC and ACC mm -hmm. games on Saturday, Fridays and Saturdays. So it, it it's it's frustrating to see um and even for myself of like just having to cover realignment and just this whole thing of the slow inevitable demise of a historic conference it's it's just it's sad to see but also at the same time it's just like at this point with everything that we've already gone through nothing surprises yeah. me at this point it's not a matter of and even other schools are dealing with this too, but for like transfers and all that, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. 
And that's that's the biggest like takeaway I have from 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 realignment was it was just not a matter of if somebody's gonna do this or this, yeah. it's just when it's gonna happen and you can't control it until until it happens. Yeah, no, a hundred percent. And you know, you 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 hit so many things like right on the head. And you know, to that point, Ryan, I, I make a plea for this. It seems like every three podcasts, but maybe one day um it'll actually get its way to the top. You know. At this point, Ryan, Oregon State just needs its super booster, Jensen Huang, to come in and just save save the university, save the athletic program. I mean, you know, uh, 17th richest person in the world and growing and an Oregon State alum. And, you know, it's at this point, it's like outside of like a massive cash infusion and being like, you know, we'll just support ourselves for a while. Like, you know, from that perspective, like, you know, obviously we'll see how realignment continues to swing, but like, you know, Oregon State, the 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 goal hasn't really changed in the sense of like Oregon State still has to, you know, keep themselves in the lifeboat, so to speak, until the next round of realignment comes, whether that's the super conference, you know, that's a cool idea. Uh, you know, whether that's, you know, the, you know, getting an invite to the Big 12, you know, whatever it is, like if Oregon State doesn't want to fall into athletic mediocrity. And, you know, maybe there are maybe maybe baseball is the sport that can buck that trend with the national championships and the pedigree that it has. And it looks like so far that's kind of been the lone sport that's kind of been able to hold water and not have, you know, guys seek the portal. But again, this is still the last year of their Pac-12 schedule. So we'll see what that ultimately comes out to be. But, you know, at the end of the day, like it's it's just it's a it's it's a situation where Oregon State is still like hanging on and they've done like everything they think they can like, right, Ryan, but like, it's still kind of like in this waiting period. And I think that part is just unbelievably frustrating to alumni to probably, I mean, if it's frustrating to alumni, I mean, you don't, I mean, absolutely like Damian Martinez. And that was probably frustrating to the coaching staff, probably even frustrating to several players, right. In the way that it, you know, went down and all that. So like you said, I think more than anything, Oregon State just needs to kind of circle the wagons and get back to moving forward and stay and getting back on the positive train because I think this one just kind of to kind of put a bow tie on Martinez before we kind of transition into you know talking some football you know they just kind of needed to you know put a band-aid on just an explosive situation oh yeah agreed and Jensen is supposed to be here on campus sometime I heard soon. that I so, mean, just I'm just saying, man. He's yeah, he's got yeah. some wealth, man. He's got yeah. some wealth. Yeah, I, I I mean, like it's just yeah, it's just kind of this this unfavorable situation. And I think the last like words I'm gonna say, I just put it in bow tie on this was like yeah. the way college athletics has gone. I, I to <laughs> to the people out there at the top making these decisions, it's like don't try to pretend that we're not already at a minor league system when it comes to like college football. That's essentially what we've become. And, and like just time to rip the bandaid off and fully embrace, embrace that at that point, because like it, it's what it is. It's just those people at the top are dancing around it and kind of like, uh, yeah. kind of like, Oh, we're not going to say it is, but in reality, that's the actual case. So it's just kind of like, that's the trend that we're going towards. And, it sucks for the sport and especially for schools like Oregon state and Washington state. But like, I think it's just kind of like, it's just, it's the new normal until, until something, something changes. Yeah. And, and I don't, and you know, I don't think anyone could have quite seen this coming a few years ago, but yeah, I mean, I've, I've been on the record. I hate what this has done to college sports. I hate what NIL has done to college sports. I hate what it's done to, you know, just like you said, schools like Oregon state, Washington state, and they're not going to be the last Ryan wait until no. the ACC decides, Hey, Boston college, you're not good enough to be there, you know, there or, or you know, I, I guess I shouldn't say, you know, Purdue now after basketball, but Purdue's been very mediocre in football for a long time. We've just found out football is what drove the bus and all the realignment. You know, you've got all these second and third tier sports that aren't football that are now having to travel cross country to play, you know, softball and baseball. And that's all been talked about. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's just it's real. you know, as someone who has watched college sports for a very long time and grown up with it and and in this business because of my love of college athletics um it, it's it's been disappointing and definitely you have to kind of adjust your expectations and kind of adjust to the new normal as ryan so eloquently put and you know that's that that's it but at the end of the day you know using it as a transition 
life moves on, as Ryan said. And, you know, we could sit here and talk about Martinez until we're blue in the face. But at the end of the day, Ryan, Trent Bray and the other hundred and some football players took the took to Reeser Stadium today and we're back uh, at practice for spring practice number 10 if you can believe it it feels like it just got underway and we're only just a few away from it being wrapped up spring game a week from Saturday um, you've been there this week with TJ Matthewson obviously he was able to join us on this pod uh, this time but the um, the reports have been good most what I want to start with obviously is um, the return of uh or rather the debut of uh, Jabari Johnson and just what, you know, he's been able to do. Obviously we saw him in that walking booth, the early part of spring, Ryan, what has he done at practice so far and what have you seen from him? So Bray, Bray kind of said that he would be available for the second half. Didn't really specify when, mm-hmm. but that Tuesday with Dame absent, uh, I saw him in helmet and shoulder pads, which I was a little surprised to see. Not not gonna lie, I was kind of like, "Whoa, this is this is new." Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this is new. And and I know a lot of a lot of Oregon State fans in in my mentions and people I've talked to have been excited to see what Jabari has been able to do. And that first practice, he really only just threw to receivers and tight ends. He didn't really take any seven on seven reps or any team reps. They were slowly kind of easing him back in. Uh, that first practice, Song complete a few throws. He's really accurate mm. with the ball. He throws a really nice ball, very much like right on the numbers for a receiver. Um, just easily catchable. Very, very good arm strength too, especially today. He threw it deep a couple times and some seven on seven work. And that was kind of the next step for him uh, was getting that under, under his belt. Mm-hmm. So he, he has the ability, he has the arm talent similar. I wouldn't say like exactly like DJ's arm, DJ, mm-hmm. DJ and him are very different style quarterback. Sure. Sure. Big, big time. But like very much that like ability to throw the ball deep. Yeah. Um, he can do that consistently. He's very, and he's very accurate in his timing. And like, even for, I, I noted in today's practice report that, that a couple couple drops happened on a few of his passes, but that wasn't really his fault. It was more the receiver's fault. Uh, there was one Jalen Holmes on about like a slant crosser type route sure. where Holmes had it in his hand and it just went right through. And he like threw his hands up like he couldn't believe it. Like, yeah, he dropped that pass. So. That wasn't on. That was not on Jabari by any uh, by any means. It was it was it was receiver on uh, on that on that throw in particular for, sure. for what I just mentioned. But so they're kind of just easing him in a little bit since he's not practiced in a while. So he's not cleared yet. It seems like to go full contact because even in team reps they didn't throw him in. Sure. Um, and I think probably. We could see him in the spring game, maybe if they gave gave him a series and he's cleared by then. Uh, but if not, we'll probably wait till fall camp to see him. Yeah, in in a team on team setting. Yeah, actually. I I know that there's been a lot of excitement for him, Ryan, and I know you and I kind of talked about it last practice. We were there together, and you know, you talk about you know the fact that he was very highly ranked. I mean, just like we mentioned it before, for perspective, as far as dual threat quarterbacks went in that 2023 class he was like one spot below Aiden Childs and we all knew how special Aiden Childs was and you know all is was you know whatever (laughs) but that all being said I think there were very high expectations for him coming in despite you know not playing at Missouri and I don't I don't think there's necessarily like hey this dude's gonna beat out everybody and be a world beater but the fact like hearing what you just said shows me why he was a four-star recruit and why he was as highly decorated coming out of high school out of Tacoma and Washington as he was. He put up stupid numbers in high school, folks. Like I said, go uh, check out Beaver's Edge and, you know, uh, search, you know, Jabari Johnson with it. And we have a couple stories that have his high school numbers. I mean, they're they're insane. The numbers he put up and the dual threat ability to, you know, I believe over 2,000 yards rushing on top of it all for his high school career. So uh, a lot to like there. And you know, to your point, you said, and we put today, you know, Ben Gobranson did not participate in practice today. He was there. Just got to state the record on yeah. that. He yeah. was there. Yeah, he was, um, he was there. He was there. And then, yeah, you no, know, it's, it was kind of like, a, right. kinda like a, yeah, kind of like, 
I know after after the um after uh you know the Dame news was kind of like uh oh we like wait <laughs> yeah Beaver not... fans are gonna be gun shy yeah. for a little while no doubt but and then you know to up the other side of the equation and you know I still think he's got potential but Ryan is it a stretch to say that Giovanni McCoy is maybe underperformed compared compared to where we would have thought he would have been at this point. I think there's an adjustment period for Giovanni. Sure. I, I really do think it's maybe a little too early to write him off right now. Yeah, um, no, for sure. But like, he's definitely, he's definitely struggled at times. Like there's a few throws even today. He had a few good throws, but then, but also an interception as well sure. too. That was just kind of, I think arm strength is definitely something that's a little bit of a concern and adjustment the speed of the game, but that's kind of what spring ball is for. And we'll see how he progresses uh afterwards and into fall camp but he's got a lot of ground to make up on bengal branson Uh, yeah no and i'm curious to kind of see because again spring is interesting again uh obviously you were there too ryan uh dj was not he wasn't a world beater in spring last year like i remember when dj was here and we're all like dj hasn't quite separated himself yet and you know it spring can be a little funky sometimes and again i i really liked what giovanni put up uh at idaho but again we talked about that adjustment period and i think it's going to be a little bit longer than maybe we expected in terms of just like hit the ground running uh ready to go uh real quick just because we got to cover a couple more things before we run out of time again big thanks to uh, ryan harlan for uh, jumping on this edition of the edge podcast uh and big thanks to everyone for tuning in and continuing to uh, read all of our stuff make sure to check out um ryan and tj's full practice report at beaversedge.com today if you're not a subscriber we got an awesome 30-day free trial you can just hop on over to the front page click on that and check out everything we've had uh for spring ball so far but Moving over to the defense, just to kind of give them uh, some some cred too, Ryan. Seemed like today, interceptions, DBs were really kind of flexing their muscle out there. And then, uh, you know, the offense has obviously been a work in progress, new scheme, new system. We've talked about it, you know, you, me, and TJ to close out the early part of spring, and it seems like it's continued now. The defense really does seem like it's pretty much what we've come to expect under Bray. Doesn't look like there's a whole lot of different schematic changes, maybe some tweaks with Keith Hayward here. But if Oregon State fans wanted something to be confident about heading into the season, I still think it's the defense, despite some new personnel, they look to be getting after it pretty well over there. Oh, yeah. I, and, and I think the strength of this defense is the secondary, um, yeah. in particular. Like, Kobe Singleton has definitely been something that stood out. And even Exodus Ayers today, too, yeah. had an interception. So the, the secondary, I think, is probably the strongest suit of 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 the defensive side of the ball for for Hayward and and even some small small minor tweaks like personnel and what he's bringing to that so similar concepts there's not a lot of drop off similar concepts but just some slight things that probably Hayward has brought over from his time in the NFL and sure. his coaching journey to getting to this point as well too and really like they they're they're going to be exactly if as it is as if Bray was coaching the defense. Right. Like that's that's the best way I can kind of see it. But the secondary I think is going to be the biggest strong suit, and then linebackers and that as well too with both Chisholm and Melvin Jordan holding down the middle of that of that front seven there. Yeah, there's definitely, and you 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 hit it right on the head. I mean, you know, the secondary's got some pieces back. Obviously, Jaden Robinson, Kobe Singleton. You guys talked to Skylar Thomas today. I am so excited to see that guy back. Um, you know, hopefully, you know, you talk about him and Alton Julian, who have had both had you know couples years robbed with ACLs, and those guys were extremely productive players when they were on the field. So it's great to hear him. And then uh, to your point about the linebackers, talking to uh, uh, AJ Cooper today, the new inside linebackers coach, like what we saw from and heard from him. Uh, and then you know you're right, the whole you know defensive line, new faces, whole linebacking core, new faces, and they did a great job of replacing, you know, brought in some Juco guys, had some guys that are back and have played a little bit. Um, I know that Aiden Sullivan's been a guy in the middle. That's been, you know, impressive. Uh, DJ Westlock on the edge has been a guy, the Missouri transfer that, you know, I've been impressed with and, you know, uh, up and down, you know, it's definitely going to be something where I highly encourage, you know, it's been, it's been a frustrating, you know, week for Beaver fans, but definitely get out to that spring game because, you know, it's a it's a new era for Oregon State football. And, you know, it's like anything else where I think there are some new designs and new tweaks where, uh, you know, it, it will be different, no doubt. But I think Oregon State's going to run um, a more, 
you know, the defense will be the same. And I think the call, the offense is going to be a little bit more of a college offense rather than a pro style offense, which could be fun for fans to kind of, you know, rally behind and kind of enjoy. And I'm excited to kind of see how it all shakes out between now and the end of spring. Likewise on that. And, uh, and kind of just see what Ryan Gunderson looks like as a play caller. Sure. It'll be Absolutely. probably very basic concepts, but that gives at least an indication of what to expect at the start of the season uh, for at least for play calling. Absolutely. And, and, and just to close out the podcast, we got just a few more minutes left. We'd be remiss, Ryan, if we didn't close with uh, some women's basketball talk. Uh, you have definitely been on the foreground of that as all that's kind of happened this week. And, you know, uh, we, we kind of spoke about it a little bit earlier. Some of the men's basketball departures, uh, you know, I, I don't think they caught a whole lot of people by surprise necessarily, given the year the men's team had and just the state of that program. Uh, currently, the women's team, not so much. I think that's been a little bit more surprising. You know, obviously it starts with, you know, Talia uh, kicking things off and then Tamea was shortly after, Adley after that, Donovan Hunter, uh, Marta Peach. And then after today, you know, Lily Hansford brings them uh, to six, Ryan are they done or is it still there's one big name that is still there. And I I'm very curious. I'm sure Beaver fans are very curious. What are you hearing on Reagan beers at the moment? I've heard, I've heard back and forth things on her potentially staying her potentially going. It's just, it, it's really hard to get a gauge um, on, on the situation. And yeah. for some of these players, it's not entirely, I want to put that out there for people that might be listening. It's not NIL related or anything like that. It's just the situation that Oregon state has been put in and yep. making their decisions as a result of that. But it, it's just kind of a wait and see thing. Like I said, it's not a matter of, of if it's a matter of when, and, and the, it's just, I've been hearing, I've heard, I was hearing earlier today about Hansford and right. Marta Peach caught me off a little off guard a little bit. Donovan Hunter, I'd heard for a little bit as well, yeah. too. But I trust Scott to I, I really do trust him to hit the portal hard. And maybe right. this might be something that he uses as a sense of motivation to rebuild this roster. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say done. I think if you can keep Reagan, I think you gotta you have a building block really good. Yeah. Uh, in in the WCC next year. But it, it's just kind of a it's just kind of a wait and see at this point on what Reagan decides to do. Yeah, I was just, and, and I'm curious just, you know, to kind of wrap up here, Ryan, were you as surprised as I that I really thought, and maybe this was naive of me, that Scott Ruick being the coach that he is and that program having the success that they've had the last decade, I really thought they would be immune to, and, and they would get some players that were like, hey, let's go dominate the WCC for a year, see how it goes. From that perspective, this still surprises me. I think so too. And I kind of got that sense a little bit of like, just kind of shock of like some of your major contributors on that elite eight run are now gone. Right. And maybe a little bit plays into like their, their own personal situations a bit. And I don't want to speculate on. Sure. Yeah, of course. For their reasons. And and it's just kind of it kind of sucks to see, but like we've seen it in basketball before with Louisville, at least their men's team losing sure. their starting five. Yep, that's so true. This is kind of kind of a a thing in in college basketball now. So it 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 just it 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 sucks for Scott and kind of how this kind of played out. But I think he'll use this and hit the portal hard for next year because if he can keep Reagan, I think this team has a shot at finishing the top of the of the WCC next year. Absolutely. And we'll be back, you know, obviously talking and bringing you guys more news as we get it. We'll be talking more women's basketball, more baseball, more spring football. Uh, so make sure to stay locked to beaversedge.com. Big shout out to Ryan Harlan for joining me on this edition of the Edge podcast. And big shout out to everyone for supporting Beavers Edge. Make sure to uh, head on over to Beavers Edge and check out all of our content this week. Ryan, big thanks, my man. Hope you have a good one and uh, we'll talk to you, you guys soon. Lot.